everybody, I am Dan Cavallari, slow guy on the fast ride, and I am in the garage. Well, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm in somebody else's shop. <laughs> We're here at Boulder Gruppetto, and I am here with somebody uh, you may have heard of uh, from the small, unknown uh, competition called the, the Olympics. Did I pronounce that right? I think so. Olympics. Yeah. Uh, this is Ruth Winder, uh, Trek Segafredo, recently retired, living the retired life. How's the retirement going so far? <laughs> um, it feels the same as any other year. I'm just in off-season mode. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Well, except the difference now. I mean, I know you're a baked goods aficionado. Yes. And so no scone in Boulder is safe. Is that mm, correct? No, no, never. <laughs> I'm sure that's changed in the last yeah. five weeks. Okay. Um, thank you for joining me. And uh, thank you to Zach from Boulder Gruppetto for letting me take over his space. Uh, we have a really nifty bike. This one happens to be Ruth's race bike, which is beautiful, first of all. Uh, I love the paint job on this. I'm actually a little jealous that this is this is the women's paint job because I would totally ride this. In fact, oh, I think you can probably get it. I think I'm going to get it. Yeah. yeah. I'll just call up track. Yeah. Yeah. They, they give this away for free, right? <laughs> to cool guys like me. Um, Ruth, tell me, first of all, um, you had a an incredible ride at the the uh, Santos Tour Down Under been in the Olympics you have a silver medal to your name uh, you were at the Olympics this year an incredible career uh, and it was it seemed like there was a lot more to be to be done uh, but you called it quits um, tell me why tell me where you are in your life that that, that seemed like the right time yeah um, I guess first I, I personally want to clarify the silver medal at the olympics thing it's an area that makes me feel a little bit like not uncomfortable uncomfortable but okay. i think you're referring to the team pursuit yeah. when i was on the track so i was on the team pursuit team and they take five to the olympics mm -hmm. and i didn't actually ride so technically i didn't get a medal but the team but the team got a medal okay. and so i just like to tell people that okay um, but i think if you ask any of the girls they would agree that the medal was yeah. Also, that I was part of the team. Anyway, so I'm just to answer your question though. Retiring. I have zero medals, so. Yeah. yeah I mean, I <laughs> my, cool. One of my teammates <laughs> did give me this um, Ecos medal, which mm -hmm. is you get these if you medal at the Olympics, you get these medals to give to the person that you think contributed to um, kind of you getting to where you were going. Cool. Um, and she gave me her medal. So Whoa. I do actually have a medal. It's just not. Um, it's, it's, track cycling is unique in that way that yeah. if you get win a medal in soccer or almost any other team sport, the mm -hmm. entire sport, the entire team goes up on the podium, gets a medal. Right. It's just not that way in track cycling. Uh, anyway, so I okay. wanted to clarify that, but, um, no, I do feel Silver like, medal. We can, <laughs> I think we can count it. Um, we, yeah, I think. I do feel on the top of my game. I do feel really, really fit still. I yeah. did have a really, really good last season. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I just decided to retire because I just feel like there was a lot of time between races and yeah. I wasn't enjoying it very much. And I sure. was finding it really hard to also focus during the racing because it felt kind of tough for me between the races. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't say that it's that I don't like bike racing anymore. I think mm -hmm. it was becoming harder and harder to focus on the good parts sure. because... Um, when you race in Europe all of the year, you, you're gone in Europe all of the year. Right, and right. <laughs> this wonderful shop here is owned by my fiance, and yeah. I was missing him, especially the last two years when travel has been really hard. Yeah, and yeah. he was able to come over for a couple of weeks to Europe um, right before and made it a really, really lovely last trip for us. Mm -hmm. But before that, it was just, it would, I think we went four months one time, just I was in Europe, couldn't see him. So there were just parts like that, and I was just starting yeah. to miss home. And yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm not too old. I'm 29 next year, uh, but I've been racing since I was 15. So I feel like it's been a really long career yeah, and I'm yeah. really grateful. I think I've had a really good career. I'm lucky yeah. to be able to say that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, just the amount of the level of dedication that it takes to be a cyclist, I'm sure. I mean, just mentally is it, it takes up everything. Right. So to be able to come home and, and expand your your view of, of what life can be. Right. I mean, that's that's exciting in a way. Right. Yeah. 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 It is exciting. I already feel like there's all these different options you know from working with juniors yeah. to i don't know we're talking a little bit about gravel racing maybe oh next boy. year because that's the true scene, retirement you know? like, yeah. Yeah, true reti <laughs> like i'm really doing the retirement thing yeah, right yeah well i'm definitely addicted to exercise and i need to yeah. slowly like, wean myself off it so i'm like yeah. i'll do gravel this yeah. will help um <laughs> but it also just seems like a big really fun scene that yeah. i've never been able to and this um, mountain bike races too that i would love to do that i've just never been able to and Zach loves sure. it like he kind of was on you know cyclocross bikes which I'm not 
not cycle crossing, yeah, not sure. going that way. Okay. Um, but the, you know, like Breck Epic and mm -hmm. those kinds of things that I've seen super fun. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we live in a playground here. Yeah, I mean, we really do. And you've been, you've been, now you're back, you can actually take advantage of the playground. Yeah. yeah. So bikes will still be a part of my life, yeah. I think, in a big way, whether yeah. that's through coaching or, yeah. and I've already been coaching for a couple of years now. I coach for a company here in town called uh, Apex. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, retirement, exciting, fun, but let's talk about your career a little bit because it was a good one. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> tell me about the, all right, first of all, so it's, it's neat for me because, I've inter interviewed a lot of cyclists and so rarely am I interviewing like one that I'm a fan of. So like I've followed your career and like the Tour Down Under was such a cool race to watch. What what are some of the highlights for you of your career? What were some of the special moments, the special wins, or even, you know, ones you didn't win that just kind of stand out in your head as, as remarkable for you? Oh, well, thank you for first for yeah, supporting me. Flattery um, will get me everywhere, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, Tour Down Under was really, really cool. I didn't, and I, and I think that race for me felt so good because I, it wasn't just winning, but the way I prepared for it, mm -hmm. I felt really, um, yeah, mentally there and yeah. present and we had such a good team around and mm -hmm. that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I think winning nationals was a really, really big deal. Oh, I had yeah. Taylor there, Taylor Wiles, one of my probably good friends for, well, not probably, I know a good friend for life, <laughs> I hoped, and I think she agrees, yeah, but yeah, yeah, a good friend for life. Yeah. And the second half of your comedic duo yeah, as well. Yeah, and I could not have won that race without her and just mm -hmm. having having her there and, and not just at nationals. I mean, she's been so important to me my whole career. And, yeah. and um, so that was a really special race to win. I mean, and it's nationals. It's one of those races that everybody wants to yeah, win and very, yeah. very few people do. And it doesn't matter if you're the strongest. Sometimes it just, I don't know. It's just one of those weird races. It either comes together or, or it doesn't. Yeah. And, and that way, in that day, it, it really did um, come together in mm -hmm. a way we didn't necessarily expect it to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'd have to say that uh, Brabantse Field this year was pretty special yeah. winning by like that little that was awesome. Yeah, teeny that was tiny. Great. I won by, like, I mean, nobody... Yeah. It's probably still controversial if you go on the internet yeah. and ask people. <laughs> um, but they told me I won, so yeah. I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah. Walk um, away with it. <laughs> I don't know. And then I guess other other races, like earlier in my career, I always like to remember the Giro Rosa in 2013. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't win, but Mara Abbott won that right. year. And I was racing for the national team. And I think it was the first time I really learned how to race as a team. And mm -hmm. she won the pink jersey really, really early on in the stage race. So mm -hmm. we had to protect the jersey for almost the entire week. Yeah which I just remember being so exhausted. I think it took me three months <laughs> to recover from that, that race. Yeah. I was still I'm pretty young then. So yeah, yeah. it was just such a huge physical effort, but it just felt like the first race I did that everybody came together for this one goal. Right. And it was really special that she won in the end. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's been, I've, I've had, like you said, I've had a good career and, I've, mm -hmm. and I feel lucky to be able to say that. So I have so many good memories. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And you, you wore a little bit of pink this year too. It was for the tea time, tri team time trial. Yeah, uh, um, we've had a really, really good team time trial team the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and even on Sunweb, we won the team time trial for the Giro Rosa. Yeah. But when we won it this last year, I was the first person to cross the line. Right. So, and it was the first stage of the race. Mm -hmm. So that put me in the pink jersey for the next day. The next day was you know, not, not my dad. So I, yeah, I lost right. it very quickly, but it was still, it's really, really special. We have it. Yeah. Do we have it here? Uh, no, we don't have this one here. We have two other. I see two pink ones, but not uh, three yeah. one. Oh boy. That yeah. one's from Joe Martin. Yeah. And this one is from when Mara won. She gave me a jersey. And cool. that's, I wore the, I won a stage um, when I was riding for Sunweb, which uh -huh. also put me in the pink jersey, which was a really cool race actually. Cause we won the team time trial and Ellen wore the pink jersey. Yeah. And then I think, three or four of us wore the jersey so cool. we i think leah wore the jersey the next day because she uh, was up there in the sprint and so from sprint bonuses yeah. she got in the pink jersey and then i won the stage the next day and then nice. anyway then then we got into the mountains and we lost the jersey yeah. in the team. But, um, <laughs> but it was cool it kind of went through the team when we were on yeah. some of that year so this is a great little museum by the way of, of all your jerseys and i'll yeah. take some footage so you all at home can see it but man, i mean this is like your career just laid out here. This is really cool. Yeah. And I'm sure, I mean, behind every one of these jerseys, I'm sure there's a, a thousand stories you could tell about that race and, yeah. um, and how, I mean, th this is really incredible just to think, I mean, you're retiring now, but I mean, boy, this, the stories here in a few years, you're gonna have to write a book. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'll go straight in for you. Yeah. I'll make up some embellishments. But. <laughs> I think you have to. Yeah. No, it is. I was sitting here the other day, just looking at them. Yeah. Just kind of. I don't know. It's yeah. hard to be 
I think maybe maybe not for everybody, but for me, sometimes it's hard to be proud of yourself in a lot of ways. Really? So it's nice to have these visual things. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is quite a lot of jerseys and this isn't even all of them. So oh, yeah, I think there's tons to be proud of here. This yeah. is incredible. Um, speaking of, of being proud, I mean, you were you were actually at Roubaix this year as a fan mm -hmm. and got to witness the very first Roubaix Femme and one of your friends won it. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. What was it, what was it like to be a fan and, and watch one of your teammates take take home the uh, the big prize for the first ever race. Yeah, I mean, I loved being a fan there. I didn't want to race it in the yeah. team. That for a long time. I mean, it's no secret that I don't love cobbles. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not bad at racing on cobbles, but mm -hmm. I, I think am. it was just yeah. uh, <laughs> but not the most fun. No, um, they're hard. And it was such an iconic race that mm -hmm. even if there was just a small part of me that didn't necessarily want to do it for myself, so many yeah. girls on trek did. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to take a spot from anybody, yeah. but I still wanted to be there. It was still an important moment in women's cycling. Um, oh, yeah. And yeah, I had I had Zach over there and, yeah. and we were hanging out with cycling tips. So I kind of got this whole really fun experience of like yeah. behind the scenes with the media and everything. And, yeah. and it was, I mean, it was really, really fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. And Lizzie winning, um, made it definitely a bit more special just totally, because yeah. I was still, I mean, Trek's still my team, yeah. still on the team. You were technically, like so yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it, it was really special from that point of view. And yeah. I think that the whole Peloton really respects Lizzie and she speaks for women cycling yeah. in, in such an elegant and strong, powerful way that yeah. I think the whole Peloton was so excited to see yeah. her specifically win. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really, really special. Yeah. yeah, she is such a great representative of, of the women's peloton. I mean, I think she just speaks so eloquently about it and obviously cares very passionately about it. So, yeah. Um, what Ruth means when she says she got to peek behind the media curtain is she got to go in like a really smelly, cramped, gross press room. <laughs> Been in a lot of them. <laughs> it was really funny because people in the like all the press people were looking at me like. What is she in here? What are you doing here? I mean, normally yeah. riders, normally riders like flee from these areas yeah, and don't yeah. want to be anywhere around. And yeah. I was just, but it was super cool because we were also like course hopping, you know. Uh -huh. So yeah. without those badges to get you like closer to the course, like yeah. I don't think we could have yeah. done that. But it was super fun. You like, it felt super rushed. You'd be like rushed and stressed, like get yeah. to the section, and then you'd be stood there for like twenty minutes waiting for the yeah. riders to come by, and then everyone would ride by, and then you yeah. all of the press would then sprint to their cars yep. and then drive as fast as they could to the next section, mm -hmm. and it was super fun. And yeah. Yeah, it was cool because we were like right there when we saw Lizzie attacking cool. and, the, and the, nice. uh, the TV coverage hadn't started yet. So yes, not that many see. people got to see that part and yeah. we, were, we were like literally right so you there. You really so. got to witness history. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah, that, so I always tell people like I've covered the Tour de France, I think, five times. I've seen about a minute and a half of total racing. Yeah. <laughs> so just zips by and then you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll drive now. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of driving. It felt yeah. like a lot, a lot of stress and then really calm and then a lot of stress and yeah. then really calm. But for me, I was just along for the ride. Yeah. So the whole thing, I was just like, okay, I guess we're running now. Yeah, and yeah. Then, <laughs> I didn't have a camera with me. Right. I was just like there as a fan. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, more or less stressful than actually being in the race. Definitely less stressful. Yeah. Definitely less. <laughs> yeah, but... there's snacks in the car. Yeah, you know? <laughs> there's always snacks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's sort of an interesting um, question, too, is, you know, as a pro, do you, I mean, I guess maybe you wouldn't know this because you never really witnessed it purely as a fan, but do you watch these races differently being a former pro now and sort of seeing them and saying, okay, I know what's happening in the Peloton at this point, or are you just as lost as the rest of us trying to figure out pixels and who's, <laughs> who's what on the screen? Um, no, I think I definitely have an advantage. And I don't think I even really realized that, but just hanging out with some of the media guys, they were like, well, what you think is obvious, Ruth, is not yeah. obvious maybe to somebody else. Like, right. and they were asking me why and how Lizzie got away so easily. And I'm like, oh, because yeah, everyone was still waiting for their leaders. Yeah. Or, you know. So for me, I think I do have a heightened understanding uh, of what's oh, going on but you're maybe. headed for a commentator position yeah. i think <laughs> i think i would like it yeah that'd be yeah. awesome all right so you heard it here <laughs> somebody hire her um yeah i think that'd be that would actually really and i think that's what's fascinating anytime a, a, a former writer goes on to be a commentator is getting that insight and mm -hmm. and i think it is hard for some writers to really put that into words like what's happening yeah. you know for you like you said it's obvious right like oh yeah she was waiting for this or you know we whatever's happening in the side we don't know you yeah. know <laughs> i mean even the most seasoned fan still doesn't know the insight of what's happening in the peloton so it's a neat perspective for you to be like oh yeah i know exactly what's going on in that situation yeah um does it change race to race i mean do you understand 
a stage race better than you understand a, a one day race or a cobbled race? I mean, or is the strategy kind of just there and you know it? Um, I think there's definitely a different understanding, right? Like when you're watching a stage race or something, then you have to, lots of the times there's the race within the race. So yeah. like they're racing for the win and then they're racing for the right. GC. So if you're not in tune with what's happening on GC, then it might be really confusing, which right. happens to me a lot of the time when I'm watching the talk is sometimes I miss a day yeah. or right. sometimes I just didn't watch one of the days or you only watch half the day and you're like, wait, how many groups do we have on the road? And yeah. why is that? It's fu- wait, what's happening? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think too, especially now while I know the whole peloton like I still know like we were watching um Drenta was just on and mm-hmm. they just we turned it on and they showed a shot of a group and we were like is this the front group or the back group right. and I was like well this is the front group because I know all these riders yeah. would be in the front group and, and not in the back group doing, yeah. you know but then they shot another group and then I was like well this is the back group yeah no offense to those girls I'm sure they just did that job and yeah. they were now in the back group right but you know what I mean like yeah. I know the girls so and I know where I would be right. <laughs> so I kind of can figure out what right. group it is but I think with stage racing as long as you know the GC game and yeah. the stage game, then yeah. you can have a pretty good idea. I think I, I want you around when we watch races with, so my daughter and I watched all the races all year and I just want you to like be in the background. So when my daughter says, Teddy, which group is this? I'll just be like, Ruth, <laughs> I would love to. what group is this? <laughs> <laughs> love to. Yeah. All right. Now in your post racing career, you immediately took on a new role. Uh, as the UCI um, athletes um, representative, representative of the women's road peloton. That's that's not going to fit on a card. <laughs> <laughs> Just shorten that. Um, what is what exactly is that role? What is your responsibility? What do you have to do for that role? Yeah, so the UCI basically has a representative for every category of cycling. So the women's road peloton has one. The men's road peloton has one. Um, BMX, mountain bike, yeah. and then for men and women and and everybody. So that basically when the UCI meets and they come out with the new rules, which they do probably once or twice a year, Mm -hmm. then I go to the meetings and I I represent the women's peloton. So I just have to speak on behalf of what we think would be best. Mm -hmm. So um, although I'm retiring, I still feel like I have so many connections and I plan on staying connected with the women's peloton. So I think that I'll have maybe more... I don't know, maybe even more mental space for this than someone who's still racing. Like it can seem quite daunting to like be so invested in everything while you, it can get frustrating to, I'm sure I will find out. Um, (laughs) I've talked a lot to Iris who was um, two years ago, two terms ago. So the term is four years. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she has talked to me a bit about it and, and I'm excited to also see cycling from, you know, the different side, different point of view. Um, and see see what I can help do. I think it sounds like I just have to be there and be as prepared as I can at the time of these meetings, yeah. but the work outside of that maybe isn't as much. Mm-hmm. The rider councils, the riders will, or the representatives will also meet. So yeah. we'll also have meetings that are just not, not necessarily these board meetings with the UCI, yeah, but yeah. the, you know, the BMX, the mountain sure. bike and all of that, which yeah. I'm sure will be interesting, but I'm, I'm interested to see how we work together because I yeah. think what like BMX and road cycling, like what are we going to so talk about yeah. at the, in the same meeting? Right, so that right. seems really interesting. So, but yeah, I am curious to kind of be involved in cycling in a different way. So, yeah. will, will there be much collaboration between you and your counterpart, a, a gentleman named Philippe Gilbert? I don't know if you've heard of him. <laughs> um, do you guys are you guys going to sort of coordinate and chat about you know? what sort of things you might want to bring to bring to bear the meetings together or i mean is it sort of an independent thing um that's a good question i actually don't know yeah okay. the answer to that he tagged me on a post on instagram so okay. i was like Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah i haven't done any work or anything with it yet um i think just with the wrapping up of the end of yeah, this season yeah. i think everything will kind of start to happen next season sure um but i think if it makes sense that he seems really open to it so yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, in in terms of new things happening, I mean, you were joking on Instagram the other day about um, detraining. <laughs> What's that been like? I mean, is, do you have to convince yourself to be like, no, I don't have to go out for seven hours today. I can't eat that uh, that Danish. Uh, uh, Zach's sitting right here, and he could probably answer that question better than I could. <laughs> I'm gonna interview Zach after this. Yeah. Get, the, get the real scoop. <laughs> uh, no lies. Like honestly, I'm definitely addicted to the exercise, mm-hmm. and and that's been harder than I 
thought. Um, I think I keep telling myself every day that I'm retired, but it's not really sinking in. Like yeah. my words aren't registering in my brain. <laughs> so I still have this like a bit of a panic. And yeah. I think, honestly, I think some of it is because I felt my fittest. Like yeah. I, honest, I honestly felt as fit and as strong as I've ever felt before. And yeah. I feel a bit panicked to let sure. that go. <laughs> even though I'm like, well, even if you were racing next year, you would still take five weeks off. Like last year, I, I take five weeks off my bike. I don't right. ride my bike. Right. And this year I feel like even more stressed and not let it go. Yeah. Um, but jokingly, we've just had our friends just feel like Ruth is your detraining program. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> yes. Today you have to stay up late and watch yeah. movies and drink have, some more beer, drink some and just and just learn to relax. Like it doesn't. Yeah. Zach will be like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mm, matter. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it doesn't. It's just since I was 15, I've just tried to be this high performing athlete, mm -hmm. and and now I don't have to be anymore. Right, and I'm right. like, well, what does that mean? Well, until you start racing gravel. Yeah. yeah. Until I really start racing gravel. But yeah. oh, everybody seems really fun. I don't know. I hope that I hope it's a little less. If it's just a stressful as road racing i'm not doing no. it so <laughs> no you will not have that problem believe me so yeah. yeah um but no i think i think yeah we'll see yeah what comes up with the gravel but no in terms of it's just it's just taking a different approach to i think you know working out and and stuff like that which yeah. will just take time i'm actually doing some classes through the usoc have okay. some i think because it was an olympic year they right. have a couple of programs like retiring athletes so i've been doing one that's had swimmers and wrestlers yeah. and all these athletes um who else has been on there there was a uh judo i think or something anyway so athletes from all different sports just nice. kind of coming together and yeah. realizing we all kind of have something in common in retirement nice. and trying to figure figure out what we're gonna do and yeah and how to like yeah, be okay with these. Because I was learning, it was really helpful. I took a class yesterday and they were just basically telling you, you have all these hormones in your brain yeah. that exercise just in like you get all this feedback and then right. when you stop doing it, they kind of yeah. change. Yeah. So it's actually a little bit painful in your yeah. brain. So I'm like, okay, so I'm not weird. No. I, so I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going through a chemical change in my yeah. brain and it's going to take time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it is actually, I mean, it's a difficult thing. And actually Phil Guyman, I think, made a, a wonderful transition to retirement by basically poking fun at the idea of retirement, but actually it is kind of hard. I mean, for yeah. you who is conditioned to be a world-class athlete, I mean, just stopping, that that's not healthy. No, right? no. And I think I knew that a little bit before, which is yeah. why I was interested in gravel and having at least, I'm hoping that it'll help me learn to still be able to ride my bike a lot yeah. and, and hopefully still really be involved in the scene, but also not have to give it up completely. Mm -hmm. And while I learned to prioritize other parts of my life. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense. Like, yeah, absolutely. Instead of just going cold turkey done, because yeah. I think that Zach would really wouldn't have a very fun time. No, I think everybody would be cranky. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's good to transition into those other new activities you have, like painting your house yeah. over and over and over again. Yes. <laughs> Ruth and Zach just bought a house up here in, uh, in Colorado, and it, it needs some work, I guess. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's about 100 years old, and the yeah. family that lived in it before... Um, I didn't love it as much as we're gonna love it. Let's just say that. Like it's it's structurally great. Yeah. It just needs some cosmetic. Yeah. Like they built a closet uh, under the stairs, but yeah. to build a closet, they literally just hacked a hole in a wall oh and then stuck a like a really cheap door on it that nice. didn't fit the flushly. It was just literally a hacked wall with a door, and we're like, well. This is not how we would choose right, right. to do this. Hashtag so. home improvement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get yourself a cargo bike and you make the runs to Home Depot. You know? Yeah, but luckily I think that's why we were able to afford the house. Right. So there are some perks. I, I feel that very deeply as somebody who's been building my, my basement for the last seven years. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, one last question for you that I, I find fascinating. I think most fans in the U.S. particularly connect to European racing through social media. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the easiest way to do it, right? I mean, yeah. it's not always easy to watch racing here uh, or connect with the athletes. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of the stories told on Instagram or, or Twitter. And from that, I've kind of gleaned that the Trek Segafredo team you were just on was very um, close knit and special. What was that dynamic like? And what is it sort of, what's it like having to leave that behind? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, I think that we just had a lot of respect for each other. Honestly, yeah. there wasn't I think some girls I'll still talk to in the future and some maybe I will never talk to again, but sure. not because of we didn't like each other, but the whole team just had a really high level of respect. Um, and that kind of, I feel like it went through the management as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they really pushed to have a really good women's team and they yeah. took a lot of time to hire the women that they thought 
would kind of mesh together in yeah. that way. Um, I think it will be hard leaving it behind. Even though we're out, we have a group WhatsApp and then I've started to chat about things next year. And I'm like, Aww, I don't want to leave the WhatsApp because I don't want to miss out. But at the same time, I kind of want to leave the WhatsApp because it, it's making me sad, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I think at times it'll, it will be hard, but I think they know I'm going to still be their number one fan. And, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I feel like that's really nice. You know, even someone said to me about Rupe, like, I don't know a cyclist that would retire and then show up the next, the very next weekend right. to such a big race as a spectator. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I mean, bike racing is fun, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's super fun to watch it from the other yeah. side. So I, and I don't think that they'll treat me like a stranger if I ever yeah. show up to a race, you know? So that seems to me like a good indication that you retired at the right time because so many athletes I've spoken to who were, you know, retired, they said, Oh boy, I, just, I had to leave because it just wasn't fun anymore. Yeah. And it's good to leave before you reach that point and still have a love for the sport and for, you know, for riding bikes for, for, for fun. I mean, I know yeah. you and Zach go mountain biking a lot and, um, that's just the best way to do it is leave before the burnout happens. So yeah. I think you have time to write. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. I'm here for, for affirmation. Um, <laughs> Coming right. time. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so now the serious questions. Are you ready? Yeah. If you were a Harry Potter character, which one would you be? Oh, I like the Weasley twins. The chart, what are their names now? I can't even remember. Fred and George. Fred and George, yes. Yeah. Uh, so one of them. I don't mind. They okay. were always funny. Now, I know for a fact that you uh, you do like whiskey. What's your favorite whiskey? Uh, my favorite whiskey, the probably Yippie Kaye's. Uh, well, no, that's High West Yippie Kaye. High West, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite, favorite one. But I okay. think it's kind of because it tastes, tastes like a Manhattan straight yeah. out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's, yeah, probably a good one. I think one we drink all the time. Oh, actually, what's the Scottish one we just got that's super good? The Irish one. Some, somebody gave it to Zach. It's a really, really lovely gift. It's very expensive. I wouldn't oh, normally buy it. Malt, malt, I feel like a Molten or something. Very, very something. Yeah, you, uh, Middleton. Uh, Milton. Yeah, you, you showed Irish, me that last time we were here. Irish whiskey. That's yeah. delicious. Yeah. And I've been trying not to paw through that because it's, it's, <laughs> it's very, very it's expensive. Bottle, yeah. Like it comes in a box and you're like, ooh, yeah. and like nearly sings to yeah. you when you open it. Um, so, yeah, probably those two are my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to con both Zach and Ruth to come to my garage because I have like absurd amounts of bottles of whiskey. Oh, it's going to be really hard to get us I know. there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to make you record a podcast for The Practical Still, my other podcast. <laughs> Check One that I actually listened to. Yeah, Ruth, that's, yes. uh, Ruth actually asked me for advice on what to get Zach for his birthday, and I was honored. So. Yes, I did. I ended up getting him that bottle. Yeah. You like that one a lot. The Bookers, The yeah. Bookers is pretty good. Bookers is like my favorite. Yeah. So go check out The Practical Still on uh, YouTube <laughs> yes. and on uh, wherever you get podcasts. Um, anyway, back to the important questions. Uh, your favorite baked good at the moment? Oh, I just have been making this banana bread. I make it all the time. Um, it's... Uh, basically tahini, bananas, oil, some chocolate powder, uh -huh. and that's, I mean... And do you deliver? Uh, it depends who you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the last book you read? I'm currently reading Bravey. Bravey? Yes, What's by that? Alexi, and I'm blanking on her name. It's about a runner who she's also made movies, TV shows. Um, I'm only a chapter in, but a friend gave it to me. Okay. Yeah. Good so far? So One far, chapter so, in? Yeah, so far good. It's a bit sad, but yes, yeah. good. Okay. Um, and last question, when you are warming up before a race, which you don't do anymore, I know, um, what are three songs on your playlist? Ooh, I don't really even listen to music i think when i warm up is that weird um you know it's funny i ask this question to everybody and, and actually i think more often than not they say they don't listen to music yeah i think because most of the time if i do warm up i'm warming up for a team time trial because uh. i don't really warm up for i just don't ride, warm up for road races it's just <laughs> okay. not something we do yeah. you have many um, many miles to warm up as a yeah. race yeah. uh, and then you're just like so sweaty and yeah. everything i don't know i just yeah. but i guess if i was going to listen to something probably just like pop song okay. hotel room service i actually told myself i would listen to that during intervals um which it's like a pit something song i don't even know who nice. it is all right i'll give you a pass on that one sorry <laughs> bad answer um and if people want to find you on the social medias where can they find you uh ruth window eight is instagram and it might also be twitter i honestly hardly open twitter anymore so Instagram's the way just, to go. Just go on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. I'm only really on Instagram. Okay, Instagram, Ruth Winder 8. And if you have questions for me, uh, at Brown Tie Dan, uh, I will be happy to pester Ruth further with more questions if you have them. Uh, Ruth, thanks for joining me today. It was awesome to see you, and it was great to see this kind of a museum to your career, which is really awesome. Yeah, thanks for coming up to Boulder yeah. for it. Of course, yeah, I twist my arm, right? <laughs> Boulder's so awful. Um, yeah, and for those of you listening, 
thank you for listening at Brown Tide Dan. Like I said, if you have questions, please do subscribe to this channel if you'd be so kind. Give it a thumbs up right down there. Thumbs up that one. Uh, and uh, please subscribe to the Slow Guy in the Fast Ride newsletter. I'm going to have all sorts of awesome stuff coming up, uh, including the, the interview that you're witnessing right now. <laughs> uh, and thanks again, Ruth. We'll catch you guys next time. Yep. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>